Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is JNR Woodworking Today. I had a lot of emails asking me about the finish that I have come up with for my puzzles. I dip them in it and um, it's 100% waterproof. I'm going to show you how I use it and I'm going to show you how I make it. And I'll guarantee you, you're not going to believe it. And you'll probably run out to your shops and try to make this stuff yourself to see if it really works. But put your earplugs on. I've got to cut up a couple pieces of uh, plexiglass. Let's just say to use for coasters right now to set the pieces on I dip. So uh, take your earbuds out. <laughs> I cut them up about two inches square. You can make them any size you want. I use new plexiglass. You want to uh, peel the paper off. You want to get uh, all the dirt off it. You don't want any dirt on it. And you don't want to use what they call Lexan. Uh, I've never used that. It's a very hard uh, type of plexiglass. I use it at work for making um, guards out of for machines. Because you can literally take this stuff, cut it to shape, and I bring it over to my son-in-law's shop. He's got a sheet metal shop. And he puts it in his large brake. Now this a brake is what they use for bending steel. And you can actually, Lexon, you can actually bend it a 90 degrees or even tighter and it will not crack or break. Where regular proxy glass, if you tried to bend this, it just shatter. Uh, that's really nice stuff, but it's not cheap. But for what I use it for at work, it works great. But at home, I'm going to use plain plexiglass. My supplier that is uh, West Michigan Rubber Supply, they were kind enough to give me this small piece for a demo, and uh, but I usually buy my stuff from them. Let me kind of clean this mess up. We're going to spin around to the bench behind you, and I'm going to show you how I use this finish. So hang on. Okay, we're on the bench. Here's my finish. This is what I use. This is a board that I brushed it on. Now, I don't know if you can see the shine on this, but it uh, brushes on. It's a little difficult to work with because it dries so fast. It's not like brushing on paint where you can go across and back and forth and work it in. No, you brush this on, you brush it on, and you quit. Because as soon as you brush it on, it's starting to dry. And if you go back across it, it'll just tear it up and it makes an awful mess. But this did come out pretty good brushing it on. Typically, I always dip it. This is a puzzle piece. Uh, what I do is down inside of probably this lock... I'll take a straight pin and poke it in there. I'll have some thread tied onto the straight pin with a Christmas tree hook on the end of the thread. Now a friend of mine was going to dip some puzzle pieces, so naturally I gave him all my stuff. But I made uh, a hanger. But you don't have to. I. When I run out of room on the hanger I made, I just do this. I take a couple of my spring clamps, stick a donk of dowel in there, and there you go. When you're done with it, I take the clamps off, I hang them back on a rack, I put the dowel back in the box, 
and I don't have to store anything else. It's already, it's ready to go whenever I need it. Now, like I said, my little hooks and my rack is blown out, so I'm not really going to dip anything. I did dip this, this piece of scrap a couple times, and you're going to have to play with this stuff. You're going to have to try and thin it where it works the best for you in your application. Now, I've tried, I, I tried brushing it with a fair amount of success. I've tried spraying it. <laughs> Believe me, that does not work. It's something about when you spray this stuff and it goes through the air, it picks up air, and it turns the board white. That's what it looked like before I sprayed this finish on. And I don't know what, I'm going to try to spray it with like a Wagner airless sprayer as soon as I can get one. I'm going to try that. And if that don't work, I'm just going to say, you can't spray this stuff. Don't bother. But this is it. It works really nice for what I use it for. Uh, my little coasters that we cut up. Let me just lay them here. Now, what this is thinned with is acetone. Yeah, you know that good smelling stuff. You want to have some ventilation when you use this stuff, especially when you spray it, because uh, that really gets smelly. But how I make this stuff, uh, you want to keep it in a glass container. Oh, if I can get that cover off. You want to keep it in a glass container. And I usually put a piece of plastic over it when I screw the cover on. And, uh, oh yeah, you can smell that. Ooh. The product that's inside of it, because it's 100% waterproof, when you coat all six sides, it will totally be waterproof. Now, if your board cracks, the finish will crack also, and then, of course, water's going to get in, and it's going to turn your piece of oak dark. But if you've got a nice piece that doesn't crack, and you do it all the way around, hey, you can soak that stuff in water, and it's not going to hurt it. What's in here besides acetone? Well, I told you, you're not going to believe me. It's plexiglass. And you just, that's right, here's a piece of plexiglass. You just drop it in there as much as you want. And in a couple of days, that is going to be liquid. Believe it or not, as old man Ripley said, I'm going to put the cover on that. And uh, it'll take three or four days. You can see it's already starting to... Uh, it's starting to look like, oh, I, I don't know how to explain it, like maybe heat waves coming up off of something warm. And uh, you, you can already see it down in there. I don't know if you can get a look at this through the glass or not, but you can kind of see something floating in the liquid in there. That's plexiglass dissolving. Now you put that in there, you let it dissolve. Uh, I usually put a small amount in a different container and I thin it down really thin with more acetone. Now if this sits long enough, no matter how tight or what you have on there for a cover, it is going to evaporate. And if it sits long enough, you're going to end up with looks like a bunch of sludge in the bottom of this thing and it's, it's thicker than molasses. Just pour some more acetone in on top of it and let it sit. It will dissolve. And that's about all it is to it, guys. Plain old clear, clean plexiglass. You don't want to use old, dirty stuff, or it's going to make your finish look like that. Like I said, I just poke a pin in there. I dip it in some thinner stuff. I hang it on the rack to dry. By the time you get, I don't know if you got 25, 30 pieces in your puzzle, by the time you get the last one hung up, you can dip the first one again. It dries that fast. 
And this piece here, I don't know if I can get it in frame or not. If I can get the light to hit it. You can see a little wrinkling right here where it's not real smooth. That finish was a little thick. It didn't want to run off like it should. So I thinned it out a little more when I gave it to my buddy and uh, he's dipping his stuff in it and he says it seems to work good. So that's about it. Let me know what you think. I do have a video that I'm going to be putting on next week. Uh, I've had a few guys email me and ask me where can I get a riser block for my old Delta bandsaw. I've got an old one sitting over here. Let me spin you around if I can uh, get it in frame. This is an old one here. It's a 14 inch. It's all cast iron. Really nice one. And I've ordered a riser block for it. Uh, I have to tell you they're not cheap. In a day when they were producing them they were about 40 bucks. The one I ordered for that was 269 I got the saw given to me, so if I can invest $300 into that saw and actually get a block that fits, it's worth it. So when it comes in, I'll do a video, we'll open it up, we'll tear that saw apart, we'll try to get it in there and see if it fits right. If not, I guess I'll ship it back and uh, get a refund. So, stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or give me some comments on what you think I could do better. Hey, I'm always looking for them. I am on Facebook for a while, but I can't see where that's doing a thing for me. Everybody says, oh, you go on Facebook, you'll get all kinds of views. No. I got over... 3,500 views on one of my snapper build videos. I have three on Facebook. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's just a waste of time for me. But don't forget to subscribe. Send me an email at jimsfixitshop at gmail.com or jnrwoodworking2, that's the number two, at gmail.com and, and send me some questions. I'll help you out if I can. And I guess until Saturday, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for that riser. We'll talk to you soon.